here we are again. Welcome back to the Spider Web. And um, we're going to be carrying on now with our um, search into Chappie from uh, Man 6 Dead Zone um, as part of a giveaway for Karina Kansas' book channel. And we're going to first start off with some skin tone. Now, the skin tone can be any brownish colour you so wish. Um, I quite often like using a very pale skin tone. Um, and when I can find the skin tones that I have, that's not a skin tone. <laughs> uh, one's just popped up. There we are. And this one, now I use Citadel paints. They are made by... Um, or they're distributed by uh, Games Workshop. Um, they're all specifically done for the games, so a lot of the names on this you'll find associated with something to do with the franchise. Um, but so uh, if the names are a bit weird, that's the reason. Um, but uh, as I say, we're going to start off with uh, Kisler Flesh. And we pop a little bit of that on our palettes. We don't want a great deal because there's not a great deal of flesh here. Now I'm using a wet palette because I like using very, very watery paint. Um, it takes a bit longer to actually paint the models this way, but you get a much better finish. And we paint over, oops, a bit of a stray herder I can get those occasionally as you can see you're still seeing some of the grey primer through it but after a couple of coats you'll get a much smoother finish than you would if you just slap the paint on there we are and this is acrylic paints that I'm using, acrylic base paints rather. And uh, anyone who's used acrylics know that they dry very, very quickly. Using a wet palette, however, will retard the drying time so you've got much more time to work on it. And uh, I could even wait until it's dried on his face and then go back to the palette where it's kept moist. And uh, And still use it because it's not dried out. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave that there for the face. <clears throat> now we're using a very limited palette for this because um, it was actually the colours were actually suggested by Karina's daughter Sophie. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me a second, I was just getting some paper towel. Never try painting a model or anything else without your trusted paper towel because that's what we use to dry our brushes on. Um, right, so if you look at Mantic's websites for Dead Zone, you will see that this character is black and very dirty battered white colour. Um, now Karina's daughter Sophie, uh, she was the one who decided to pick this model to do rather than the other model that I was showing, although uh, suggested, and she decided instead of, um, instead of the black and white colour, she said blue and silver. Um, Okay, well I'm not going to do it actually silver, but I will try and do it as best as I can, um, like a silvery grey colour. Because doing a lot of silver on this might make it look a little bit um, iffy, if you get me drift. <laughs> it's not a... I don't know, we'll see how we go, we'll see how we go. Um, right, well that paint colour is dry, and as you can see it's darkened up quite nicely but we still need more colour on it 
we can pick out detail. Now, it's not dried as much as I thought it had. Never mind. Let's get on to other parts then. So, <clears throat> when you're painting miniatures, you try to go paint from the inside out. What do we mean by that? Well, the inside out on any miniature is the inside is flesh and the outside is your top layer of clothing. Okay, so you're working from your flesh tones and then outwards. So, that being said, we need... Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I really should get my painting case or my paint storage case sorted out. Abaddon Black. Again, Citadel. The other paints I use. I need a little bit of that on our palette. And I'll say that we will need more than that. And what I'm now going to do is go around the inside of the helmet, or the armour here, not the, hel not the helmet. And this acts as the shadow areas. Oops. Trying hard not to touch the skin tone, but if you do, it's not a, uh, a massive problem because we can always go over again. We need a few coats anyway, so let's, uh, don't worry too much if you do go over the... Um, skin tone um, so that's that part we're also going to be doing here I know I said blue but uh, we want a base colour put on we have a primer colour but we want a base colour to work with and that base colour in this case is black For the blue areas anyway. We don't want black as the base colour for um, white. Obviously. <laughs> so everywhere where we feel that blue is going to be, that is where we put the blue. Now bear in mind, I say this on all of my or most of my tutorials um, when all said and done these are your models okay yes you usually usually find that in the game stores and games developers um, will put on their sites and in the magazines and pictures on the internet certain color schemes for the particular to show off the particular range now for certain things yes okay follow that I always say that your models you've paid for them you're painting them you have to like them so paint them whatever color you wish there is no right and wrong for color scheme up to a point now if of course you're doing say historical battles miniatures um, you don't want to be uh, painting your Napoleon Napoleonic War uh, English troops in uh, bright green with orange spots you want them all in certain color of scarlet or red um, the same man if you paint if you collect and paint Warhammer 40,000 figures um, you won't be putting uh, 
salamanders in blue you'd be doing them in green so there are um, what do we call it uh, there are always exceptions you know you've got your rules where you stick to rather but um, oh we have noisy beggars outside again um, yeah, you, you always have the uh, what you call it as I said paint them the way you want to paint them but if there is a set way to paint something you're doing a specific army then you should paint them that colour otherwise it's not right so hopefully the noisy beggar outside will shut up very soon and I'll be able to concentrate on my painting so as you can see the very very watery colours it's going on like a wash more than anything else we don't want it too thick but yeah we don't want it too thin we want it covered because some of these areas are going to be staying black um, in fact I think that area can be no I can't we'll do that area in the black as well we're going to be picking out certain areas to do certain colours um, if it's not exactly the same as the official ones from Mantic Games then it doesn't matter Mantic don't have a set colour for the armies so paint them whatever colour you want it's just that they do those in a certain way doesn't mean to say you have to so that's that bit done and I must admit that these hard plastic models are a lot nicer to work with than the plastic resin mix that they work in okay so I'll do that piece as well and the rest is going to be the silvery grey colour uh, now I'll do a few more areas because we want as much difference as we can get so let's see what we can do we want to pick out in the black areas just small small little or small areas that it's sort of like an exclamation point to break up what's going to be a large amount of the silvery grey. I don't want to do that, don't want to do that. That I can do just over there like so. And that is that area because his knees bent. We can see it's here. Now this, as I said, is the base coat. We're not um, doing a great amount of, or not spending a great amount of time um, thinking about detailing. We're just basically, well, we've given an analogy of um, decorating. Uh, we've put the you know you, you get some burr wood you put your primer on which we've done which is this grey colour that you see and then you do the undercoat oops and then you do your gloss work well the bit that we're doing now is the undercoat the gloss work comes in the line of um, or in the form of um, <coughs> highlights and detail um, and that one becoming when the we have a good coverage of uh, the undercoats and it, you probably take about two or three coats using this very thin paint that I, I like using um, <clears throat> So, uh, 
do this bit as well. Yeah. Now, that's that bit done for that. Now let's have a look at his um, arm. What can we do on here that is can be black? Well, we have this here. We can do that black. Now, if I glued this on, I'd have had trouble at this particular point trying to get into here to. That's a bit of flushing I missed, I do apologize for this. And we can cover this black in completely. I mean, this part we can actually keep black, we don't have to um, change to a different colour if we don't wish to. There's not much on this that we really need to um, do black, but it's better doing it now, again that part of it being a dark colour, than waiting until we've got all the, um, the light colours on, and then trying to go over black, or trying to go over with the black, because It's going to be much harder to get into the details once the um, once the main body's been done. That's that bit done, and now let's have a look here. So let's do the whole gun black. We can do something different with it a little bit later. There we go. Now bear in mind I'm doing this video um, as part of Karina Cantus's um, book page on Facebook. Um, I'm saying a lot of different things that may be obvious to people who have been subscribing to me for a while. Um, I'm talking really to anybody who is uh, not a gamer, not a miniature painter. And you're just looking at this out of interest. And it's something new. So if I do say anything that's a bit obvious, then uh, that's why I'm not... Um, this is not one of my set pieces for my uh, or set videos for my channel it's a, a little extra and uh, uh, okay so that's that bit done and we'll just do this little bit here there we are Okay, I'm not going to do black. In fact, no, I'm not going to do black. Changed my mind on that one. Okay, let's have a look at his face now. It's dried. Let's go back and add some more colour. his face. Now we will be adding what's called a wash. To his face. Now a wash 
is very very watery very watery um, paint mix it's more water than what I'm using now um, and that will fill in the recesses and it will give shadow and once we've got that shadows in place then we can start bringing out the highlights and we've got that second coat that and I've just noticed I've missed a little bit with the black so I'm going to go back to black just for a second and fill in the okay next we are going to be using a very pale grey colour um, Hoping this is going to be a different shade to the primer. I'm just going to test it on the back. It is, yes, that's fine. If I test it on the where well, it's not going to be seen, we can see what, how it will fit. <laughs> um, because the one thing you don't want to be doing is start painting and suddenly realise everywhere you've painted is mixing in with the primer and you can't see it <laughs> okay so we're going to be painting over all of the areas of the main body that is left And I wish I had some way of securing this down. I'm used to using a base. I'm used to having it attached to a base and then having the base attached to uh, an old paint pot. That's what this is. It's, it's an old uh, Games Workshop Citadel paint. A bit of sticky tack on it to uh, keep it held on. Because it stops you holding on to the, the miniature while you're um, while you're painting it and getting finger marks and whatever on it. Right. So we're going over all of this area now in this grey colour. So I'm going to fast forward the video and then uh, get to the next part. to do. Remember though this is the first coat of the um, undercoat, shall we say, or base coat as we call it in miniature painting world. Um, we will be building up this coat to be smooth and a consistent colour rather than being patchy. Uh, but that, as I say, just takes a little time. 
um, I'm showing you here now how or what we're painting um, but I will come back um, I will go away now give this time to dry and then when I come back uh, we'll go it will be uh, fully painted um, to the stage where we can start adding highlights and by fully painted I mean the um, let me call it the base coat, I don't mean it will actually be finished. Um, the base coat won't be fully uh, done, and then, as I said, we can get on with the highlights. Um, I've shown you that. I'm going to do the um, the weapon arms again um, off camera because you see what we're doing on the. You don't really need to see everything, but it's not going to take too long to do. Um, as you can see it's just a case of slap the paint on which is one of the things I say quite frequently in my videos um, especially in regards to just base coats and just slap the paint on if you go over somewhere you can always come and tidy it up um, a little later like here I've gone over somewhere that should be grey with black so I'm just go over it with grey there we are that's about it um, I may do some after looking at some of these areas I may change a few things here and there and put black put some more black in and uh, so a few minor changes, but that's I could, that's if I do that, um, we'll see in the next video. So, until then, as always, take care, God bless, and bye for now.